Roberto Milka is joining us. He, uh, global trotter, man. You're all over the planet. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. So much so that I'm guessing that as you're traveling, you were inspired to create your platform, your business, right? Right. Almost. Almost. Really? So, yeah. So I, as a kid, my, my parents were both teachers. My dad was in the Peace Corps. And we didn't have a lot of money growing up. Right. But no matter what. We would take a long summer vacation somewhere. We would just escape. Wow. We would. We would. We I would, love that idea. Yeah. Okay. Was, so you guys, <laughs> and it was it was somewhere. It wasn't a town next door. It was. It was an adventure. It was an adventure. A total adventure. Like for example, we would go to Mexico. We'd pack the family into the van. The, and drive. the grandmas, both of the grandmas, grandma, my abuelita on my mom's side, from Peruvian, and my my grandma, my missionary grandmother. We would just drive. We'd go into Mexico and be like, okay, where are we going tonight? And we'd have a map and we'd figure it out. I love that. Yeah. It was do you do that today? Great. No, I don't. I mean, mm -hmm. what I do is I, I never book more than two days in advance on a hotel when I get to a country. Okay. But I at least have the first two days. I mean, this was like crazier than that. It was just total adventure. Yeah, but, 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 it, but it set that whole beginning of adventure. Absolutely. Of taking risks absolutely. Yeah. and seeing through that yeah. risk, which is yes. really, really yes. critical. Yeah. So, Roberto, as you're doing this, you're starting to see the world, see the planet. Yes. Um, yes. w when did this whole idea of creating a marketplace for artisans come from? Well, I think so. So in those travels, one of the things that we did see a lot is poverty. We, we saw, you know, we mm -hmm. traveled a lot through developing nations and you see that. And so there was a there was a built in sensitivity to that. Um, and on my mom's side, um, my grandmother was an artisan. OK, so this feeling of needing to find a better way, needing to really reinvent, you know, how artisans can sell their goods to the world was something that like when the idea came, it was like, oh, yeah, that's that's what my life's all about. <laughs> and how long ago was this? That was, um, let's see, 1995 at Stanford with a group of people, including my wife. <laughs> this is a long time. Oh, ago. yeah. It's almost yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah, we just celebrated our 15th year anniversary for the company. And the idea, yeah, 20 years and going. So yeah. so as you're sitting there going, we're going to create, what was the platform initially? Because 1995, I and mean, right. we're just looking right there at when yeah. Yahoo got going. Right. And it was yahoo.edu. Yeah. No, it yeah. was. It was. I mean, you're right there at the very beginning. Speaking of Yahoo, so mm -hmm. the year, uh, rewind one year, and um, Jerry and I are in, Jerry Yang and I are yeah. in an entrepreneurial grants committee at, at the Stanford ASSU. And we're funding one student business on campus, right? Okay. And we get the finals and, you know, there's these great ideas. There's a software idea. There's a used CD store on campus. And Jerry's like, you know what, guys? You guys should, I mean, this Yahoo thing, and it wasn't Yahoo back then. It was something else. It's like, you know, there's something to it. And, and we ended up investing in the used CD store that was out of business, like, the next year. Oh. And Jerry got the SoftBank funded, and, like, yeah, it was, it like, three or four months after that. Yeah. I was with yeah. Gary Rochelle yeah. when he actually funded that, when he got it going that, uh, off of SoftBank. Yeah, right. It was a home run. Yeah. So did you, yeah. did you create something while you were there then? So the idea came, and then we we're like, I, I called. What was the name I, initially? The, uh, uh, ooh, what globe was, shopper or globe, globe shopper or something like that. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I, yeah. I like the iterations yeah. it goes yeah. through. Yeah. Okay, Roberto. But, but so at that point, um, my girlfriend at the time, not my wife, my wife now, I did the riskiest thing anyone can do. What was that? I got her mom on board. <laughs> my girlfriend's mom you know before who, you got her before in the... yeah so it Whoa. was the united she was with the un You're she was a human a... rights officer with the un You're crazy <laughs> that is that is pretty crazy yeah. yeah and so we called her up and we're like look we have this idea to transform the way artisans sell and she's like this is great if you guys can get the money to do this then i'll leave the un and i'll join on i'll join you guys and so then i was like oh my god i was thinking about law school i, I really i was lost honestly i was an, an entrepreneur heart I had already done several little things at Stanford, like fun entrepreneurial activities. And that's what I had. And I just didn't know what, where I was going in my life. And then suddenly I had direction. I was like, okay, I need to get into investment So you're like banking. 20 years old, right? I'm 20, yeah. 20, 20 years 20, old. Yeah. And you said, hey, let's create this platform with my yeah. girlfriend's mom. <laughs> right. <laughs> my brother was in there and, you know, there was All other family. extended family. Yeah. My, my roommate, my college roommate. Yeah. So yes, yes. how long did it take till you, and it sounds like initially it was a direct reservice. Right. Well, so no. So check it out. So we no, we didn't want it to be that. We wanted okay. it to be a, a whole an infrastructure. A okay. Because e-commerce wasn't available back yeah. then yet. Well, it was. You know, it was just that it was just getting there. You know. Okay. So, um, the our concept was um, was always th it was thinking big from the beginning, and we're like we can't do this unless we raise money. So that's why. I went into inv investment banking and I incubated the idea for almost five years. Now it makes more sense. Okay. Yeah. So that so the idea and I re really recommend. 
one thing I tell people is get skills. If you don't have skills, just get the skills. You know, work for free. It doesn't matter. Get if you know, if you have an idea in a certain area, you know, really try to focus on how do I get the skills that I need to start this up. And in my case, we we knew we needed to raise money, so. I went in investment banking. I didn't work for free, but no, but you, you I did went, work my butt you went off. To school, yeah, then you went to investment banking. Understood the ins and outs of yeah. fundraising, which I'm very yeah. interested as we move forward in the conversation. The platform today is called Novica.com. Novica.com, which yeah. stands for. Uh, so we wanted a name that can be pronounced in almost any country in any language, and so we went consonant vowel patterns, kind of like Coca-Cola. Okay. And so, and and the root for for uh, for new. Because we're building a new platform, and, and Latin is Novus, so it was like Novica. Novica, yeah. okay. Novica. And it's, it, it, let me tell you something. It's very, very rare that uh, we actually have nonprofits on the group. So, right. you're a nonprofit. It's not a nonprofit. Good. So we actually thought about it. I want to flip yeah. around. Okay, yeah. I, was, yeah. I was really concerned for a second. Yeah, I know. Because... Because I, I, I love nonprofits later on yeah. after people really yeah. have made it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're a for-profit environment. Right, except we thought maybe we should be a nonprofit from the very beginning. We're like nonprofit, for-profit, how do we scale this? Okay. How do we scale? And we ended up raising about $20 million. So it's like we couldn't, <laughs> yeah. High five. All right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. So we couldn't have done that Back as a nonprofit. In, wait, 15 years ago? From from the ninety nine to like two thousand three, and, and like we million. did like seven rounds of financing. And you went the you know? roller coaster ride, Roberto, of yes. the the dot com crash. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean two thousand three yeah, yeah, yeah. was yeah. dismal. Two thousand one was. Were you was, up in San Francisco? No, 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 no we weren't. Here? We were down here. Though. Okay, we started in the basement in Santa Monica, and um, we opened the home offices around the world, and it's grown now. We're just like a four story office in Peru, and we've. Got, I got to tell you, I went to yeah. the site. That's a beautiful site. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Novica.com. Yeah, yeah. It's N O V I C A.com. It's a beautiful site. And I'm really into Balinese art. And yeah, you got a yeah. great marketplace for oh, Balinese yeah. art out there. Um, and just global art from, from jewelry to fashion to home decorations, paintings, unique gifts. This is an amazing, quite frankly, I'm kind of surprised something like Amazon hasn't bought you. <laughs> no, right. I'm serious. Yeah. Right, because yeah. it seems like this would be a perfect environment yeah. with inside yeah. Amazon. Right. What do you? And I use the term speed to cool. That's your elevator pitch, okay? Right. Yeah. Speed to cool means I'm going to say cool if it's a great idea within about ten seconds. What's your speed to cool? Wait, what's, I didn't get that. What's your elevator <laughs> pitch? Oh, my elevator pitch. Okay, so we work with artisans around the world. Mm -hmm. um, we completely reinvent import export, and so we've created this new platform that's never existed before. Uh, to sell goods to to people around the world, and so National Geographic has come on board, the World Bank. Um, we've got all these kind of a list uh, Those are, a list backers. That's and, cool. Yeah, but what, yeah, why are yeah. they behind you? Well, we're going to find out when we come back. Roberto Milk is going to help us understand exactly why a platform like this not just exists, but why it flourishes and does real well. And then later on, empowering women with Liz Heller. I'm Ken Rakowski. This is the Business Rockstars. You got to get criticized when you're an entrepreneur. It just happens that way. I'm Ken Rakowski, Business Rockstars. We get to share time with rock stars that have made it. We learn from them what it takes to start, grow, and fund their business. We're here to help you make your dreams come true. It's time to make entrepreneurship look easy. 855 Rockstar, give us a call. I have a feeling Charlie would pick up the phone. He's one of the guys producing the show. Steve and Charlie make it work really well. If you go to the website, you could actually see what's happening right now. That's businessrockstars.com. Roberto Milk is joining us. How many countries? Uh, eight countries. You've been. No, how many countries yeah. have you been to? Oh, 50. Wow. Maybe. Just yeah. traveling yeah. the globe, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. All traveling the, place, yeah. the globe. <laughs> Investment banker. You raised 20 million bucks to get this platform going. You're celebrating your 15th anniversary. Yeah. It's Novica.com. Uh, you've partnered with some really big names. UNICEF, I think you said earlier. National yeah. Geographic. The site's beautiful. Does it make money? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah? Yeah. So it, it's yeah. a for-profit business. Does it make money for the artisans? That's, yeah, that's the best part of it. And the artisans have never had a system where they actually name their price and it's totally transparent. Oh. So they, they can increase their price, decrease their price. They immediately see what the retail is for the customers. They're driving their business. And one of the funny things that they think is the coolest is the microcredit loans. We hooked up with Kiva. And I so just you mentioned can, Kiva earlier. <laughs> yeah, I love you? Kiva. Yeah, okay. so you can lend to our artisans on Kiva. And it's 0% all the way through. It's 0% at Kiva. It's 0% through us. We're, we're the... Roberto, this is amazing. Yeah, it's cool. No, no, it's so yeah. good that you should be working with governments. Right. You know, yeah. I, I'm, do you know... Um, so I'm looking at what you're doing right now, and you're at a level to where you've perfected it, it sounds like. you got a really right. working... How do you market it to the artisans in the areas that you go to? Well, see, that's not that hard, because what happens is the artisans, through word of mouth, it just gets out there really fast. So we actually have artisans coming into our offices. Um, they're, they're, we have to work with the very best artisans. 
So oh. if they're not quite at the level, then we, we say, okay, um, we accept it right now about one in three. We're like, okay, so you know what? So you have to get them to a point to where their artwork right. is accepted by your platform. Exactly, because that, that's the way we've been able to build a company. It's, it's a lot of it's curation. It's empowering artisans, but at the same time, those artisans have to be you know, talented enough to be able to empower themselves. But that's themselves. a lot of curation on yeah. your behalf then. Because well, you have to not curate, so much, because at the very beginning, we're, we're saying yes or no to the artisan, and then once they're in, they're in. No, but I'm right. saying before that, oh, you have yeah. to determine yeah. what's good. You right. know what I mean? That's yeah. curating. Right. Do you know Eve Blossom? So Eve created Luna. Luna goes into areas where there's a, a lot of uh, um, um, human trafficking, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. what she does is she gets the women out of human trafficking by teaching them how to weave mm. and produce products. And now the products are sold in places like Walmart. and, are, wow, and, and cool. So she helps them do that. Yeah. But her problem was, how do I find a marketplace? It sounds right. like you've, you've gone out right. there and made people rely on their skills so they don't have to fall into areas that probably wouldn't benefit life. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm going to Peru in about a week. With the whole family. With my wife and the four kids. You're not so. driving there, right? I hope you're flying. <laughs> that would be fun. I want, I do, that's on my bucket list. I want I, to drive. I want to drive all the way down yeah. to uh, Terra del Fuego is oh, what yeah. I want to do. I mean, yeah. that's, yes, okay, yeah. same bucket. Yeah. But you know, there, there's some problem yeah. ways, you know, right? Yeah. yeah. There's some areas right. that yes. won't work well. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, so um, I'm having dinner with one of our artisans. In a week. Okay. And this is a guy. Down Sarap there? Sarapio Bayo in Peru. When are you leaving? And so uh, next Wednesday. Okay. You're yeah. going to go down there. Okay. So, and you're going to meet with them. And? and and this is a guy who, when we found him, he was um, struggling to sell a few tapestries a week through the middlemen that sold through their, through the uh, local markets there. And he was he had a dirt floor, lived in a, in a um, what they call a Pueblo Joven in Lima. It's like a shanty town in Lima. Mm -hmm. um, and had a, had a loom there. And now he's got... That that place now has like fifteen people working there. He's got he's got looms. All the, because of your platform. All be, the first year he went from making maybe two or three thousand dollars a year to like thirty thousand dollars a year, which is a lot of money in Peru. No, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah you enable yeah, that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. your platform right now, again, if you go there, you can buy. And I'm looking at the. Pro, I mean, it's it's not expensive stuff. Right. You can get really yeah. great stuff. So you yeah. enable yeah. people's lifestyles. Yeah. These artisans. Yes. I love what you're doing. What's yeah. been the biggest hardship or let's call it uh, bumps along the way for you as an right, entrepreneur right well i think i think the hardest thing is that people don't na naturally search out our products right We're, they're not digital cameras no. right so i think marketing and on the and and uh, obtaining demand so early on we thought what's the best way to to get demand it's really strategic partnerships so we started with national geographic that was Huge. really good for us really good how yeah. does national geographic help you out so Nat Geo, um, they, they have their own catalog, which is a beautiful catalog. Oh, so you're placed yeah. inside the catalog. And so we sell through their catalog. So they source and they send their buyers to our regions, host them, and they go and they travel and they meet the artisans and they develop products with the artisans. And so we're like a facilitator for that. And, and we're also on their website. And so partnerships was the key way for, yes. for discovery. Yes. It was, so it's been a lot of business development. And um, rather than just kind of classic marketing spend. And business development takes time. These partnerships take take time, but they're, they, it's been like one after another. I mean, the Kiva partnership, for example, almost a million dollars in loans just in the last year and a half. I love Kiva. Yeah. I mean, again, my kids have Kiva accounts. I love this. As you look at where you're going, are you doing a, a give back at all to where so much a percentage goes back to a, so, a community or society? Well, what we're tracking is um, the amount that we send to artisans because that, that money has a real trickle effect. It goes to the artisans and it trickles to the communities. And, Fair enough. You know, you're right. So, so the, um, we've sent over $50 million to artisans. Five yeah. zero. Five zero. Fifty million. Fifty million. Wow. And um, yeah, and and we also um, are now doing happy what we call happiness projects, and so those are um, community impact projects where, and that's another thing we're doing in Peru um, next Saturday. You just love Peru, don't you? Yeah, we love Peru, but we love all of, all the region. I mean, Bali, which you've been to, you I know, love I Bali. Where else, love, where else yeah. have you gone? Peru, Th Thailand is is a Thailand. great great place. When we when, when we go to Bali, we try to go to Thailand too. That's that's a great office. See what's for us. important, Roberto, is main our preserving that cultural integrity right. so it doesn't get lost. Well, that's why National Geographic came on board because right around the, the, the turn of the century, they were going through this thing where they thought, you know what, it's time not to just um, report on culture, but it's time to really preserve culture because they're disappearing. Culture's disappearing around the world. Globalization yes. is like, I mean, we were just talking about the Starbucks that's in, that's in Bali, yeah, right? And so it's like globalization is everywhere. And the kids are not really wanting to learn this because there's no money in it. There and so if we make right. it a platform for, for artisans that actually they can actually make money, 
then it's some, you can really preserve culture. And but this is why, and, and I wanted to uh, touch upon Bali, and I'm not trying to promote mm -hmm. Bali here, mm -hmm. but um, the Balinese have maintained a lot of their culture because there's enough tourists going there looking for it. Yeah. So from the right. dance styles that they do and yeah. all that, people want to see that. Yeah. Now, if people stop wanting to, they would stop, they don't want to pay for that anymore. Yeah. That would disappear. Right. So we need to maintain these things so they can preserve the cultural right. environment. Yes. So I, I, my, I don't, I'm not wearing a hat, but my hat's off to you to what you're doing. <laughs> right. And I like that you're making money doing this too. This is a, a real business. It's a, yeah. sounds yes. like a pretty substantial, sustainable business, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we have big, big plans for it. Like what? What's a big plan? I mean, we have billion dollar plans for it. How do you turn so. this into a billion dollar entity? I mean, one of the things we're talking about internally is infrastructure everywhere. You know, we're in, we're in the end, we're an infrastructure company. We have built offices out where the artisans are. Mm -hmm. So how do we, how can we be where every artisan is all around the world? And so it's, uh, so we're partnering with more institutions that are helping us do that, like uh, the Grassroots Business Fund and others. And we hope to open a lot more offices over the next few years. Roberto Milk is joining us. Novik has the site, N-O-V-I-C-A.com. Uh, in association with National Geographic, huge names that are working with him. And it's all around local art in countries probably that you have, have seen the art and you thought you probably have to travel there to get it. You can actually get it right through the site. How long does it take to get something? It can take as little as three days. <laughs> yeah. Wow, are you yeah. holding the inventory? Yeah. No. It should, everything ships from the regional offices. Right. That's amazing. So That's you, our fast service. Ah, so yeah. you've created localized offices yes. for inventory control yes, then. Absolutely. They're warehouses where the artisans come in, leave their products, they get paid for what's sold. It's it's like a very efficient system. And every week and now multiple times a week from each of the offices, we're shipping these huge consolidated shipments. Come into the US and they all go, they, they get distributed out to the yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I get a lot <laughs> of people in the studio and I get excited about their business, but I don't get inspired as I'm inspired by what you're doing because awesome. you are preserving something that's so important. And again, I, I call it cultural integrity. And and I, nice, I, yeah. and a business like yours making money and making sure our culture continues to thrive and move forward. That's not an easy thing to do. And you've done it. <laughs> right. So what other areas do you think like for, are you in Tibet? Are you in uh, parts of Mongolia? Are you in parts of Japan? You know, those no, we want to, we want all those. We want to be, we want to yeah, be India. We want, yeah, we're in India. India. We're in Delhi. In Delhi. But India is huge. We're in Delhi and we're just in Delhi and you know, the, 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 the one day radius around Delhi. Got it. So you it's, know, it's so a small it's, area. Yeah. We need to do satellites there. Satellite. Ethiopia. Office. No, you know, someday. South America. I mean, these are yeah, areas where yeah. the artwork is so important. You want to maintain it, right? Yes, absolutely. South America. We're also in Brazil. Brazil's an important yeah. one, but mm -hmm. you mentioned Peru, but Chile's mm -hmm. got amazing artwork. Amazing. You know, yes. it, it just, yes. you, you got, yeah. how do you do this then? How do you open up these offices? Do you have to have a sponsor or does it come out of your budget to actually open these local? Well, we've been, do, we've been doing them ourselves, but also the last one we partnered with um, the grassroots business fund and our customers chipped in for it. So the customers, um, you know, they came in and they, it was almost like a crowdfunding, you know, for the for that Central America office that's in based in Guatemala, but it's servicing a lot of different countries there. And then also there's the export bureaus. So um, various people from the Philippines and from the and from Vietnam, the government saying, wow, by having um, a, a presence on Novica, we actually get to have um, tourists. We get to have interest in our country. It's like it's like if they help us with the little amount that it costs to open an office. Then, um, so then we can, are you working with local the tourism departments of those different countries? We're talking to them, yeah. Because it seems like they obviously they have a, they have a lot of money. They a have lot money, of these yeah, yeah. yeah. Just just Colombia alone. Let me just use this as an example, okay? Yeah. Colombia has a massive tourist budget. Yeah. Most people don't know, and they generally don't know how to spend it properly. By right. introducing people to their culture and their right. art, for probably being more people to yeah. Cartagena and Bogota yeah. than they would ever expect. Every single item that people buy from us comes with a hand-signed postcard. So you, you get to see, you know, it's like, oh, wow, I, I bought some from Peru, came from Peru, and here's a picture of Machu Picchu with a hand sign. So it's like, it really wakes up this interest in going to going It to really country. is. Yeah. Do you do stuffers inside the stuff? So, for example, this is where the tourism departments could actually be part of it. So yeah. when you get something from Peru, something from the Peruvian tourism... Oh, yeah, uh, we, we, we don't yeah. do that, but that's do interesting. Just do yeah. a stuffer, right? Yeah. And get, right. Or, or some right. type of benefits when yeah. they come yeah. to those areas. Like when you travel, you notice when you get to an activity center, like yeah. in a country, they want yeah. you to do all these activities. Yeah. yeah. Stuff it. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. They pay that's for it, idea. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's great. Roberto, yeah. I love what you're doing. Um, again, people want to find out more. What's the website? Novica.com. N-O-V-I-C-A.com. And uh, right now, how many countries? Eight countries. Eight countries. And even breaking it up from occasions to gifts for her, for him. 
uh, from jewelry to things you could wear, put in the, uh, in your home. It's all there. Right. I really appreciate you spending time with us. I think you actually can stick around. We're going to.